Hi guys, happy Thursday. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm gonna read you Clementine today. The amazing Clementine. I'm gonna read you chapter one. Um, if you like Clementine books and me reading to you, just click like or subscribe. All right, all you have to do is sit back and relax and listen to chapter one of Clementine. and see what adventure she went on today. She's always very exciting. So this is her. There she is. Hmm. Wonder what he, what she looks like to you. What is that expression she has on her face? What would you think? All right, chapter one. I have had not so good of a week. Well, Monday was a pretty good day if you don't count hamburger surprise at lunch and Margaret's mother coming to get her or the stuff that happened in the principal's office when I got sent there to explain that Margaret's hair was not my fault and she looks okay without it. But I couldn't even explain it because Principal Rice was gone, trying to calm down Margaret's mother. Someone should tell you not to answer the phone in the principal's office, <laughs> if that's a role. Okay, fine. Monday was not so good of a day, which was a surprise because it really started off with two lucky signs, which fooled me. First, there was exactly enough banana slices in my cereal, one for every single spoonful. Then, as soon as I got to school, my teacher said, uh, the following students are excused excused from journal writing today so they can go to their art go to the art room and work on their welcome to the future projects and i was one of those students so instead of having to think up things to write in my journal i got to glue and paint and stuff which is what i love to do margaret was in the art room too um when i sat down next to her she threw herself across her princess from the future mask she was gluing sparkles on too Remember the rules, she warned. Margaret is in fourth grade and I'm in third. She thinks that that makes her the boss of me. I, I have to follow all Margaret's rules. You can't touch my stuff, she said, which she always says. Why, I said, which is what I always say. Because it's the rules, Margaret said, which she always says. Why, I said, because you can't touch my stuff, she said. And then I pointed out the window, which wasn't exactly lying because I didn't say there was something out there. But while Margaret was looking out the window, I accidentally touched her mask. Okay, twice. Okay, fine, two times. Then I got busy working on my project so I wouldn't have to hear any, Clementine, pay attention, except I did anyway which was really unfair because each time I was the only person in the whole entire art room who was paying attention. Um, that is why I could tell everyone right in the middle of the Pledge of Allegiance that the lunchroom lady, I saw it, was sitting in the janitor's car and they were kissing again. No one else saw this disgusting scene because no one else was paying attention out the window. And after that, when it was my turn to pass around the stapler, I could tell that the art teacher's scarf had an egg stain on it. And it looked, if you squinted really tight, exactly like a pelican, which nobody else had noticed. Clementine, you need to pay attention, the art teacher said one more time. And just like the other times, I was paying attention. I was paying attention to Margaret's empty seat Margaret had been excused to go to the girl's room. And when she left, she had scrunched up don't cry eyes and a pressed down don't cry mouth. And she had been gone a really long time, even for Margaret, who washes her hands one finger at a time. Um, I need to go to the girl's room, I told my teacher. And that's where Margaret was, all right, curled up under the sink with her head on her knees. Margaret, I said. You're sitting on the floor. Margaret hitched herself over to the side a little so I could see she placed a germ protective layer of paper towels underneath of her. Still, I said, what's the matter? 
Margaret pressed her head down harder into her knees, which was all shiny with tears. She pointed up, lying on the sink, next to a pair of do not remove from the art room scissors was a chunk of straight brown hair. Uh-oh. Come out, Margaret, I said. Let me see. Margaret shook her head. I'm not coming out until it's grown back. Well, I think I see a germ crawling up your dress. Margaret jumped out from under the sink. She looked at herself in the mirror and began to cry. I got glue in my hair, she said, and I was just trying to cut the glue out. Margaret's hair was halfway down her back long. It's hard not to notice that the whole part over her left ear was missing. <laughs> what do you think happened? Oh, she cut too much of her hair because the glue was in there. Well, um, Clementine said, maybe if we evened up a chunk over your right ear, I suggested. Margaret wiped her eyes dry and nodded. Okay. She handed me the scissors. I cut. Then we looked back in the mirror. It's like bangs. I tried to cheer her up. Sort of. Except bangs are in your front hair, not the sides, Margaret reminded me. Then she took a deep sigh, picked up the scissors, and cut off all the hair over her forehead. Now, the front half of her hair was all chopped off and the back half was long and straight and shiny. Uh, not so good, said Margaret, looking in the mirror. Not so good, I agreed. We looked at her not so good hair in the mirror for a really, really long time without saying anything, which is really hard for me. Then Margaret's bottom lip began to shiver and her eyes filled up with tear balls again. She handed the scissors back to me, then she closed her eyes and turned around. All of it, I asked. All of it. So I did, which is not exactly easy with these plastic art scissors, let me tell you. And just as I was finishing, the art teacher came in looking for us. Clementine, she shouted, what are you doing? And then Margaret went hysterical and the art teacher went all hysterical and nobody could think of anything to do except the regular thing, which is send me to the principal's office. That doesn't seem fair. While I was waiting there, I drew a picture of Margaret with her chopped off hair. I made her look beautiful, like a dandelion. Here's a picture of that. Yikes. If they had a special class for gifted kids in art, I would definitely be in it. But they don't, which is also unfair because they only have it for math and English. I'm not so good at English. Okay, fine. But this year I am in the gifted class for math and here's the surprise. So far, no gifts in the gifted class. I told Principal Rice about that problem when she got back from calming Margaret's mother down. So far, no gifts, I said to the principal. Principal Rice rolled her eyes at the ceiling. Oh, she was looking for something up there. It looked like ceiling snakes, maybe, just waiting to drip down on you. That's what I used to be afraid of when I was little anyway, but I'm not afraid of anything now. Okay, f fine, I am afraid of pointy things, but that's all. Well, and I'm afraid of boomerangs. Clementine, you need to pay attention, said Principal Rice. We need to discuss Margaret's hair. What are you doing in the floor? Um, helping you look for ceiling snakes, I said. Ceiling snakes? What ceiling snakes, she asked. See what I mean? Me paying attention. Everybody else not paying attention. I'm amazed they let someone with this problem be the boss of our school. All right now, Clementine, Principal Rice said in her I'm trying to be patient, but it's getting harder voice. Why did you cut off Margaret's hair? Um, I, I was helping, I said. And then I told Principal Rice about how I'd helped her too. I answered the phone, Principal Rice, when you were gone. I ordered some new school pe pets and I told the gym teacher, we are never ever going to play dodgeball again. And I made two appointments for you. The phone kept going dead, so I guess it's busted. But at least I helped you a little. That's what I thought. 
There is a look they teach a person to make in principal school. That is not very nice. Oh my goodness. Try to get this picture up there. Principal Rice. All right, that's chapter one. Um, I'll read you chapters two sh uh, really shortly. Okay, see you soon.